All right, let's chat about it. She Believes Cup, United States Women's National Team versus Canada. It's a big one. We've been waiting for She Believes Cup for quite some time now. We've been waiting for this international window. A lot of players, a lot of coaches speaking in media availabilities, talking about how this window of time is such a unique opportunity because it really is going to be the final time for some competition that mirrors tournament style matches. So while there are future international windows in front of all of these national team programs, this is the only format in which it's likely going to be a round robin style tournament. We've got USA versus Canada, lots of history between these two teams. Often the two teams left standing in CONCACAF specific competition. They are familiar with each other. They have faced each other in really, really big moments. I'm a little nervous about the United States going up against I, Canada. So I'm not even going to act like I'm not. Um, they have some motivation. We talked about that already. But I think uh, I think the United States uh, are also uh, equally motivated as well to put together a good performance. Um, who, do, who do you maybe want to see get nabbed with the start in a game like this on the U.S. side of things? Yeah, so this game, I, I'm going to be very honest, it gives me heart palpitations just thinking <laughs> about it and talking about it because this is a, a matchup that is so deep-rooted in rivalry. You even think about the last time these two teams played just in July at the end of the CONCACAF W championship and the United States ends up winning, right? They, they win CONCACAF W, they get the 1-0 win over Canada and the lone goal in the game comes on a penalty kick from Alex Morgan, not the run of play, right? There was maybe a little bit of controversy about this as well as to kind of how it happened. There's this sour taste in everyone's mouth, right? The United States are thinking we should have beat them to nothing. We, we should have gotten a goal in, in the run of play. This is our rivals. And as you talked about with Canada, they've already got a lot riding on this game in this tournament and their frustrations with Canada soccer. Um, they're also still have that bitter taste in their mouth from the CONCACAF W championship. And it, it, this is a world cup year and the competition between these two is, is insane, right? So United States is number one in FIFA. Canada is number six. You asked me who I want to see get the start. And when I'm looking at the United States roster, um, this She Believes Cup tournament overall, knowing that Canada is the first matchup for the U.S., I, we're going to see Alyssa Nair in goal. I, I think that hands down, we're going to see Nair out of Chicago get the start between the sticks. Um, I think my biggest question mark is across the back line because I'm not so sure which way Black Wanonofsky is going to lean. I, I think we will see Emily Fox get the start over Crystal Dunn in the left back position, um, for, at least for this game and, and kind of how things are going. I want to see Germa and Sauerbrunn in the midfield. I do with Sophia Ware on the outside, but I'm not so sure we will. That okay. that's one where I'm just like a little bit concerned. What about you across the back line between goalkeepers and, and back line? <laughs> what do you think in there? I, for people who, who like to read their content versus listen to their content, I wrote up on .com three things that I really want to see from the United States over the course of this. She believes cup. One of the things I'm really going to keep an eye on are defensive matchups. Yep. We're a few games into 2023 already, and I'm sorry. Two clean sheets with blowout scorelines against New, Ze New Zealand did not give us a ton to evaluate uh, on the defensive side of things. So I'm looking for She Believes Cup to, to be that opportunity. And I'm also looking at She Believes Cup to give some answers a little bit. Mm -hmm. There's some of these question marks that are still floating around Um positional areas on the pitch, I think for the United States as they build up to the world cup steer, but that timeline is just getting shorter and shorter. And while there's a lot of eyes on that middle third and what it's going to look like or what it could like, as you continue to see player rotation within it, you know, somebody like a Taylor Cornea getting in the mix as well. 
I'm still looking at, at, at the back line that we're going to see players continue to get rotated in. We've talked about that. And some of these players who have been out due to absence or injury are making their way back in. We got to see the reintroduction of Emily Sonnet uh, during the January camps. And Tierna Davidson is inching her way back into this back line. Not available for selection amongst these games. A similar timeline and injury to Martha for uh, Davidson. But Although she's there training, not available for these games. So I'm I'm looking at Aguirma, yeah, but I'm also looking at Alana Cook. These are two players that sort of closed out um, 2022, maybe in, in not in the best of of, uh, of highlight reels. I think that England game, they were yeah. given the opportunity to be the starting duo. And they had a very, very rough start. Now, I do believe that they played in, themselves into that game. And they got much stronger, and I think they closed it out great. But it was tough to see that as they went you up can't, against. You can't play yourself into big games anymore. It's not going to well, cut it. You have to start. Big, yeah, big crowd, big crowd, big stadium, big team, right? So hey, that's it, all you're going to see between July and August. So, so from here on, for so she believes cup. You know, I, I think it's it's a real opportunity here. I don't know if Andonovsky is going to say, hey, yeah, we're going to have a game where we start Alana Cook and Naomi Gurma together. But I'm saying that I want to see it. <laughs> I want to yeah. see it moving forward. Because I think these players have very um, specific skill sets that are, you know, unique to them. Uh, but what does that look like when you when you play them together against opposition like a Brazil, a Canada, or, uh, or, or a Japan? Now, Canada, because of the rivalry between this, when I say I'm a little nervous about Canada, it's not because I think that, you know, the United States could lose. I mean, that's always a possibility on any given game day. I don't want anybody to get hurt. These games are always physical. That is why I'm always nervous about going up yeah. against Canada. As you build up to a World Cup, you just want everybody to get a good game in and exit this match healthy. First one of She Believes Cup, that's you. I really want to hold that, uh, you know, standard up there. So we'll, we'll see, but anything can, can happen. Uh, I know there's some players who are missing. I mean, obviously Desiree Scott, yeah. you know, her absence with an injury and in this game is going to uh, impact things a little bit, I think in that middle third. And um, yeah. I think when it comes to, to the back line, I really do want to see that duo get a start somewhere over Garment. the course yeah. of these two games. So I don't know if we're, I, I, I think at this point, you know what you're getting out of a Becky Sauerbrunn. I don't know what you're evaluating there much more than who works well with her, but right. what if you need these two players to be your starting duo? What does that look like? And what does it look like against one of your biggest CONCACAF competitions? So I want to see Girma and Cook get the start against Canada. And I want to see Crystal Dunn continue to build those minutes. And I would like to see Sofia Huerta also continue to get those minutes against a team uh, like Canada. So I got Nair and Net as yeah. well, too. At this point, you got to start giving okay. these Yeah, yeah, no, definitely Nair and Net. I, I also think that we could see Dunn on the left and then Fox on the right over a Huerta. Um, I think that Black Wanonofsky really likes having Fox on the pitch. And I agree. I think you have to get done some more minutes and, and continue to build her up, especially in high stakes games like this. If you're starting with that center back of Dunn and Gurma, you need, you need Dunn back or excuse me of Cook and Gurma. You need Dunn in that back line to kind of add a little bit of leadership um, and experience between Fox, Gurma, and Cook. Yeah, I mean, I I could see a Gurma and Cook center back for sure. Okay, let's talk about the midfield because we have to talk about yeah. this. Yeah. We have to talk about the six. We have people in our chat saying, when are you going to talk about the midfield? Hello, can you talk about the six? What's going to happen there? We're, I'm predicting that we're going to see Taylor Korniak at the start in the f defensive yeah. midfield for the United States, 100%. Yeah, I think, um, look, I, 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 saying that this is a tournament that maybe you want to get some answers. And I think you're going to find out very quickly um, what those answers are when you are integrating a, a player in a sort of a new position a little bit, at least at the national team level and how that looks. Yeah. Um, we, we, that was something new that came out of um, New Zealand. We saw Taylor Korniak uh, in a first half in that first game against New Zealand. And then we saw Andy Sullivan come in in the second half. And when we took a look at their heat maps, when we took a look at their pass maps, they were just two very different types of, of, uh, of touch maps. Right. So um, 
I think there's a little bit of grace, I think, that's given in um, in an opportunity like that. We're talking first time in the role for a big, big team like the United yeah. States. We're talking first game after a long off season uh, in 2023. And um, maybe you're you were tasked with some things that you weren't able to fully execute on the pitch just yet. But it sounds like she's going to get another opportunity. I thought it was really, really interesting that, you know, it's not just Andonovsky who ultimately confirmed that we're going to, con- we're going to see a little bit of continuity with that. They want to continue to see Korniak in those scenarios. Yeah. Um, but I thought it was very cool to also see that Casey Stoney had a bit to say about it yeah. as well, that uh, to sort of, you, you lose a little bit of something when you maybe put a player uh, like Korniak in a traditional six row uh, that maybe you want to see a player like that work more in a pivot or be given a little bit more freedom. Freedom. Which, yeah. Well, I don't know if that's, but I don't know if that's what uh, the I, coach I don't gonna task her with. Think, yeah. I don't think Vlako Andonofsky cares what she's, I mean, what her okay, so let's say Taylor, Taylor Korniak thinks. gets to start against Canada. I'm sorry. What does she need to do against Canada? <laughs> I'm sorry. That's funny I, that I'm we're nervous. laughing about this. It's true, though. It's true. I mean, but going back to that, yes, yeah, it's I'm great to get nervous. Casey Stoney's insight, but it, it doesn't matter. International coaches and national team coaches, they look at what these players are doing with their club team, but that doesn't necessarily translate to what they're doing for the national team team so I, I just don't think that that's like that viable I, if Casey Stoney wants to do something specific with Taylor Korniak great let her do that let her play to Casey Stoney what she thinks are Korniak's strengths Black Wadonofsky is going to utilize Korniak where he needs her and and she's going to do it and perform to the best of her abilities because this is her ticket to the World Cup this is her ticket to kind of solidify herself on this United States women's national team. And she's not pushing Rose Lavelle out of that spot higher. I don't think she's pushing an Ashley Sanchez out of that secondary spot higher in the midfield. And this is Korniak's opportunity to play and get starting in significant minutes with the women's national team in the defensive midfield. So I do think that she's going to get the start against Canada, maybe not because she's earned it and she's owning that spot, but because Black Wendonofsky has tasked her with learning how to play a defensive midfield role, learning how to be more defensive minded and, and not run out of position and higher up the pitch, but to be that first line of defense in front of the back line. And this is going to be the first test for her. I mean, sink or swim at this point for Korniak. And I think that's what you have to do with four or five months out from the world cup and only five games in front of you in order to test out a player like Korniak, you have to throw her into the fire. And that means starting Korniak as the defensive midfield six against Canada, you have to see how she combats uh, defensively against the pressure that Canada is going to throw at the United States, how many tackles she can win and how much uh, transitional moments she can disrupt when Canada is looking to build the ball. If she gets out of position, right? When the United States is attacking, does Korniak get pulled too high out of position? Uh, Does she stay centrally more? Does she push out wider? I think so much of the test for Korniak is going to come off the ball in this game against yeah. Canada, especially if she gets the start versus her play with the ball. We know she can play those long balls over the top. She she's got good footwork. I'm, I'm not worried about Korniak with the ball. It all comes down to Korniak without the ball. Yeah. I, I think, look, this was the mid, the midfield tinkering was, I think the second thing that I put on, on three things that I want to see from, from the world. Cup. I, I, I'm not looking for, um, you know, like pos- like starting role stealing type of performances, I think for Korniak in, in in matches like this. I think, I think again, it's it's answers. I think the coaching staff is looking for answers, and I think that if she performs even just like well enough in the role against some of these teams, I think they still keep her in the mix for a, a possible spot to the World Cup. Mm-hmm. Because I, you also have to look ahead just a little bit. And look at their group stage. Can Korniak fulfill a six role against Vietnam? Probably. Like, just looking at little things yeah. like that. Like, yeah. are they going to start her perhaps in the World Cup potentially against the Netherlands? Probably not. Like, there's some probably things not. that they're going to learn um, yeah. and probably get some of those answers in the middle third here 
with She Believes Cup. But I think with this competition, I think what they saw in New Zealand, maybe they obviously you started with Rose Lavelle. Do we see Ashley Sanchez get a, a start? Did she do enough in January to earn a start against Canada? What do you think? Who else do you have within uh, the middle here alongside Cornyak? Um, yeah, definitely Rose Lavelle for sure. Um, honestly, I would like to see an Andy Sullivan in there too. And I know that means a double pivot as, as the double six, but that will maybe give Corniak a little bit more of an understanding as to kind of what to do. Right. Um, I, I don't know. I don't think we're going to see that, but that's what I would like to see, but I don't, I think if Corniak gets the start, we'll see Sullivan come in later in the game. Um, yeah, I'm going to go Rose Lavelle. I would love to see Ashley Sanchez. I'm going to, I'm going to say Ashley Sanchez just because mm -hmm. I want to see it so, so badly that I'm mm -hmm. going to put out Ashley Sanchez and a Rose Lavelle with a Corniak in the midfield, which is, very different than what we saw in 2021 or 2022. Yeah, what year is it? I don't it's, even know. It's 2023. <laughs> Who knows? We're we're in a time warp. Um, but I'm with you. I'm, I'm I, I want to see a similar trio uh, in, in the middle. And I think something else that I wanted to see uh, in in She Believes Cup. Uh, from the United States women's national team is just, just more extended minutes for players yeah. who are building on those minutes, right? We already talked about how we want to see Crystal Dunn and that back line. I'm curious as to what Lynn Williams um, can provide out of those January mm. camps. I would, I would, while I would love to see her get a start, I don't know if that's in the car for her in this very first game. Maybe it'll be in a later game in She Believes Cup, but we saw her coming in in like 15 minute to 20 to 30 minute window increments of time off of the bench in a second half. She exited those January camps against New Zealand uh, with a goal, with an assist, with a yellow card. Um, so I would like to see that. It, does, it also makes me wonder if we're going to, you know, see someone like Emily Sonnet get some extended time um, in, in either of these games. But I think against Canada specifically, I'd really like to see Lynn Williams. If she is good to go for a full 45 minutes, I'd like to see her in a start versus an off the bench role. I would love to see Lynn Williams get the start. And I think that the way I've kind of perceived her in training camp and, and what she did with Gotham when she kind of preseason first started getting rolled around and she got traded there. I, I think Lynn Williams realizes that this could be her year for club, for country, for everything. And I hope that she's bringing that energy every day. And I'm sure she is because that's the type of competitor she is. I don't know if she'll get the start though. I want to see it. I want to see Lynn Williams get the start. Um, I think we'll see Swanson, Mallory Swanson get the start. I I think we'll see Alex Morgan get the start as well. I really do. Um, uh, I'm not sure. I, I mean, Trinity Rodman, right? She ended up getting her third start of her career against yeah. New Zealand in that second match. Like, I, I don't think we see Rodman there, but hey, maybe it'll be Lynn Williams, Sandra. That would be be awesome could you imagine a uh, swanson morgan and lynn williams i don't i don't think it's happening yes though. i can't imagine it but i don't know if we'll, i don't know if we'll, we'll actually see it um i think that's what's going to be the most exciting part about she believes yeah. cup is that you've got all of all of this talent on this 23 player roster and um how is the coaching staff no, going to use it yeah right, no sophia uh, smith in this camp with with injury so i think yeah. that also i think when Obviously, the coaching staff is looking at She Believes Cup, right? They're at this moment in time, they're looking at Canada and, and the roster they have and everything. But in the back of their minds, there has to be a little asterisk of, okay, well, Sophia Smith will be here, right? Like she's just recovering mm -hmm. from an injury and they didn't want to bring her in too early. And I think that there that's in the back of my mind a little bit. Like, okay, who's going to start for now? Because you imagine it'll be Sophia Smith down the line when, when you're in the World Cup. But hey, anything can happen at this point. And I think it's – it. It is maybe it is Sophia Smith's spot to lose, and I think Lynn Williams is a player that can go in there and and compete against Sophia Smith for that starting spot in the front line completely. That's a mic job, Lisa. I like it. <laughs> I think it Lisa, is. I mean, I do. I, I really do. Yeah. There's three games to to take a look at these performances from all of the players, all 23 of them, depending on how the coaching staff wants to utilize them. First up is a big challenge against Canada. Of course, when the game kicks off, I'm sure you and I will be texting each other about it. If some of our starting lineup predictions were correct or not, but let's make an actual game prediction now to close out this episode. How do you think this game's going to end, Lisa? 
Oh gosh, it is really hard to score against Kaylin Sheridan. It is really hard to score against Kaylin Sheridan in goal for Canada. It last time they played, I talked about it at the top of this one, nothing to us on a penalty kick by Alex Morgan. I think it'll be really narrow. I I'm going to go one nil us. Yeah. I think it's going to be a really short score line as well. I think it's going to be one of those moments of capitalizing on a quick error. Probably. Um, I'm also going to go 1-0, but I'm going to go with the United States uh, in this one. And uh, we'll see. We'll have to come on back and and see if we're both correct. Um, And uh, make sure you tune in and watch it because you know we're going to recap it for you all. So stay tuned for that as well. Look for us when we go live to recap United States versus Canada. But that's all we've got for today.